goal now is to get to that national championship. Yeah. And it's harder now because it used to be 12 teams made it. Now only eight teams make it. Um, and as we continue to get better as a program, so does every other program. So um, that's the goal is to get back to that national championship and be one of those teams that's, that's fighting for the national title. Jordan, it's great to see you. I was watching Hogs Plus mm -hmm. and the follow in gymnastics, behind the scenes, two episodes. I was excited. Yeah. <laughs> How was it for you going through that, having a crew behind the scenes and in your house? Yeah. Um, I like was telling people it felt like I was on a reality TV show. <laughs> I felt like one of the Kardashians because we had cameras around all the time, but it was really fun. I loved watching the episodes back and kind of seeing it through, you know, the fans' eyes or the viewers' eyes. And just, um, I think that behind the scenes stuff is really cool for people to see because there's so much that goes on other than what people see on the competition floor. And gymnastics is a very unique sport. <laughs> I think it amazes a lot of people, all the things that, that go on behind the scenes. So yeah, it was pretty cool. And I want to dig in a little bit more on that today mm -hmm. because I feel like in part, some of us are gym, just gymnastic dummies. Like we kind of know, we can yeah. you know what I mean? We, we know so much more just about other, other sports. And one of the things that to me is really interesting is you're raising the profile of gymnastics at Arkansas, mm -hmm. which I think is a really big statement. But if you watch these shows, you get in your life, you get in the, the athlete's life, and you start to realize a connection that maybe we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And so just seeing and hearing your story and a little bit about your journey, what, what did you enjoy watching back what, what you saw? Like the, what, what maybe gave you a different perspective? Because you're so close to it every day. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I don't know. I personally love seeing our athletes' interviews because, I mean, we, we're, we spend so much time with them. We know them really, really well, but just... Um, seeing the, the, the scenes of them out going to Mamaka or going into the movies or whatever they do is just, it's cool because, you know, that what we do as coaches and our philosophy here at Arkansas is that, you know, we try to get to know them as people and we appreciate them as whole human beings, not just the athlete that is them. Um, so I, I love those pieces and, and, you know, even with Leah Smith, seeing her parents and interviewing her parents and all of those little elements are I think it's great for people to see that it's it's a whole picture of what the program is, not just not just gymnastics and training and competing. Tell me more about that. Your philosophy, what you want to be as a coach. I mean, you're relatively new to being a head coach, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is your third year at Arkansas. You'd never been a head coach before, right? Nope. So tell me what you were thinking going in. What have you learned? And who is Jordan Weber as a coach? Yeah. I mean, if you want me to tell you what I've learned, we could be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Big um, picture. Just because, I mean, I, I was not a head coach before this. And, you know, the position I was in before was volunteer assistant at UCLA. So I jumped from volunteer assistant to head coach, which was a big jump. But um, I was ready for it and I was ready to take on the challenge. Um, but my, my philosophy comes from a few different places. First of all, my own experience in the sport. You know, I've I've had a lot of ups and downs in, in gymnastics in my own career, um, had some really amazing successes, but also saw some really dark times. And um, at the end of the day, I just love gymnastics. I love this sport. I love what it's done for my own life. And it's made me the resilient person I am today. And I think it's the best sport for teaching life lessons. Uh, so that's really kind of where my, my philosophy with coaching kind of started was wanting to give athletes and, and college athletes specifically just a great environment to, to learn, to grow, not just as an athlete and reach their potential, but as a human being um, and, and learn how to become a champion of life, not just a champion of their sport. Um, and so that's what we do. We, we coach them not just as athletes, but as students, as people, as human beings. Um, we get to know them on a personal level and, and really work on that trust element and I find that gets us so much further with the actual performance and the gymnastics. But um, my goal is for athletes to leave their four years at Arkansas, just really strong people and ready to take on whatever life is going to throw at them. Because um, we all know life can be crazy. It never goes as you planned. But I hope that they learn lessons here at Arkansas in our program that are going to prepare them for those moments. How, how did you get to that point where that was the way you felt about it? 
and like just mm-hmm. your past experiences. How, how did that shape that philosophy for you? Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, like I, I was at UCLA before this and I was mentored and coached under uh, Valerie Condos Field, who was a legendary NCAA head coach in the sport of gymnastics. She never did gymnastics a day in her life. Um, she was a stranger to the sport when she became a head coach. She was actually a dancer. And so I think that's, a, that's, um, that's where her philosophy came from. She wasn't ever involved in, in the sport of gymnastics, but she knew a ton about teaching and coaching leadership and bringing a team together in and, um, and the performance quality of what is gymnastics. So I learned a lot from her, um, but also just growing up, having had some really tough coaches and more of the negative experiences that have inspired me to be quite the opposite of what my coaches were um, and wanting to be just a a person in my athletes' lives that they can look up to and and be a role model and a mentor for them. I think in sports, we all see it every day, right? You got the coach that can be really, really, really tough. And maybe we don't see how kind they are, how caring they are behind the scenes. We just see how demanding they are. And then we see other coaches who they do it a little bit differently. Um, I I think when, when you hear like what you're talking about, um, we, we often sometimes wonder about these athletes and like, are they just being like put through the ringer? I mean, gymnastics is hard. Like, I don't, I don't know much about it, but other than watching the Olympics, I don't know, but you see the, the training, right. And that grind. And I could see where if you didn't have that, the rest of that, how tough that must've been at times, if you experienced that. Yeah, well, I think, you know, my job as a leader of the program and as a coach is to obviously impact change, you know, whether that be on an individual level or, you know, with the team. And I think there's two ways to create change. You can dictate change or you can motivate change. Mm. And honestly, dictating change is easier. You know, you can say to your athletes, do this, go there, don't do this. And you can you can dictate it and point your finger and say, this is what you have to do. Um, And the harder way to do it is to figure out what motivates each of them individually and um, develop that trust with the athletes, get to know them, figure out how how their brain works um, and figure out how to motivate them to want to to develop better habits or, you know, be a more disciplined athlete and and person. So um, that's more in the direction that that I tend to go and that I feel like my coaching staff is really bought into. Um, at the end of the day, we're, we're modeling leadership for athletes and they're going to take what they learn and what they see into their lives and their jobs, um, when they have to be leaders. And so I feel like it's really cool that we get to, we get to model that leadership and they're going to be learning from it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's too hard of a sport to, to be miserable every day. And we try to make it a a really good learning and fun environment for athletes. That's some great insight there. So the Arkansas gymnastics program started in 2003, Mark and Renee Mm -hmm. Cook. They had a couple of big moments, one in 20, 2009, one in 2011, some, some, you know, like nationals fifth and then fourth in the SEC. But one of the things I've noticed about you, and I mentioned this is how the, you're raising the profile. Mm -hmm. by the program and you're starting to really hit some benchmarks. What was sort of your thought about what you were taking on and where you wanted it to go when you got here back in 2020? Yeah. Well, obviously, um, when I was interviewing, interviewing for the job, I knew it was an SEC program, which, you know, I always looked at the SEC, like this is a really strong conference for gymnastics. Um, the SEC often wins national championships and, you know, there's all of these resources with football and basketball programs doing great. So I knew that. I also knew that Arkansas Gymnastics had a really great foundation that, you know, Mark and Renee laid um, since 2003 and they had made nationals a few times. They had an individual um, all around national or individual national champion on vault and floor with Kat Grable. So I knew the foundation was there and they had always been a good program. Um, but I was really excited to just continue building on that on that foundation and really taking the program from from good to great. Um, and that's what I was interested in doing. And one of my main goals coming to Arkansas was to really build a buzz around the program. Um, and that was something that naturally my my name brought in the very beginning. But I knew that that wasn't going to last forever. And um, and so I kind of utilized that to then bring attention and awareness around the program. And 
um, develop the social media, work on the, the marketing tactics a little bit and make our home meets really fun and engaging for fans to come. Um, and then doing our first ever meet in Budwell and Arena. I mean, all that stuff has just been really fun. Um, it's, it's one of the cooler parts of my job that I get to work on every day. It's challenging, but we really focus on building that buzz around the programs. Now more eyes are on Arkansas Gymnastics. Um, and then simultaneously, we've, we've worked to really elevate the level of recruits and the level of gymnastics. And um, we still have athletes who are coached by Mark who are currently on the team and, and, and they've grown through so many different coaching staff. So it's really cool to see the way they've, they've continued to grow and get better as time has gone on as well. Behind the scenes of that Bud Walton night featured on Hogs Plus on, on the follow, what was, how did that come about? And then on the back end of it, like, is it what you thought mm -hmm. afterwards? Um, I mean, it had exceeded all of my expectations. It was a magical night. We had been talking about it, honestly, since I arrived on campus. Um, the first year, there's a lot of conversation around, okay, next year, maybe we can try one. Um, but then COVID hit and that made things a little bit more tough. We couldn't really have big crowds my, my second year. So we put it on hold. Um, and then with things going a little bit back to normal this year, we brought the idea back up and it was honestly just a, a team effort between, um, Hunter and the administration, um, myself and the coaching staff, but also the facility staff and our event management staff marketing. And, um, it really was a team effort and we had a lot of meetings, just brainstorming, trying to figure out how are we going to get, um, as many people in here for this historical night. And I remember one of our first marketing meetings, I'm a huge goal oriented person. So for me, if there's no goal, I don't know what's going on. Um, so the, one of the first meetings I said, we need a goal of how many fans we're going to get in the arena. And I think the attendance record at the time for gymnastics in Barnhill was like 6,700 or somewhere around there. Um, and so I said, you know, I think the goal should be 10,000 fans. And maybe a few people looked at me like I was crazy. Um, but, you know, for me, I'd rather set the goal a little bit too high and, and everybody push towards that 10,000 than, um, than set the bar too low. And we did it. We got 10,000 people in the stands, which was amazing. Um, but I know a lot, of, a lot of work went into it. I'm so grateful for the opportunity for the program, you know, from Hunter all the way down to the facilities guys who are setting up you know, until three in the morning the night before just to get everything set. So I'm really grateful for that. And I know even back when Mark was here, he started that conversation and they had dreamed about it. So um, I'm just grateful. Yeah. And, and that is part of creating that buzz. How do you, how do you manage or how did you this transition from being a, a worldwide really known athlete, gold medalist? I mean, if you've watched the Olympics, you know who Jordan Weber is to transitioning into being a head coach and balancing that celebrity with also this job. And it's just a little bit of a unique position. I mean, there are a few of them. I think about, you know, there, I, I'll start leaving out all kinds of names, but one that comes to mind, like Jerry Stackhouse, NBA player. Everybody knows who he is. And he's coaching Vanderbilt in basketball. And you're like, that's the same guy. <laughs> it's gotta be unique. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I, I think it kind of started when I um, when I was fresh off the Olympics. I uh, I went professional in the sport of gymnastics, which at the time before NIL was a thing, um, you couldn't you know go to college and compete if you had taken sponsorships and endorsements and and done appearances and all that. So that's the road I went down, which meant I lost my college eligibility. Um, but at the time, I, I really want I really loved college gymnastics. I loved watching it growing up. I loved the environment, how exciting it was. Um, and so at the time UCLA was my top choice and I called the head coach there and said, can I still come and be a part of the program even if I can't compete? And she said, of course, you can be a team manager. I said, great. And I had no idea what a team manager did. Um, and so the year after the Olympics, I show up at UCLA and I get there on the first day. I'm like, okay, what does a team manager do? And she's like, well, a team manager moves the mats, chalks the bars, makes sure the laundry is clean, like does all of the things to make things easier for the coaching staff and the athletes. And I'm like, okay, great. And from day one, I did that for three years. I was a team manager for the gymnastics team and people would come to the meets there and see Jordan Weber, Olympic gold medalist, like moving the mats and kind of doing um, all of that grunt work. But I think um, where I'm going with it is like from day one, I just loved being a part of a team. Mm -hmm. I loved, you know, contributing to something that was bigger than just myself. Um, and I did that with no ego, uh, you know, fresh off the Olympics. And that's kind of how I've, I've approached my coaching role as well. You know, jumping from volunteer to head coach 
was a big jump, but I, I just have approached it with no ego as much as I can and asked a ton of questions and leaned on people that are there to help me and answer those questions. And I think that's helped me be successful in these first three years. It's also a jump in the way these athletes grow up in a lot of cases, right? Individual to now you're part of a, a team and trying to achieve a team score. How, how does gymnastics work in that way? And is that, is that sort of a tough transition for some of these athletes going from, you know, their career as a, a, a you know, junior high or and younger to, into this, into this college experience? Mm-hmm. It is a big transition and it's difficult for a lot of our athletes, I will say. And it's one of our biggest challenges every year um, is ha- helping our athletes grasp the fact that, you know, you you individually are the only one up there on the equipment. You know, in gymnastics, you're on a four inch piece of wood on the bounce beam. You have to hit your routine, but it also matters for the team. And if you don't hit, it's going to affect the team score. And so it's simultaneously individual, but team at the same time. And it's never been that way until they have gotten to college. Um, and it's, it's difficult because it, it adds a lot more pressure when you're having to do it for the team versus just yourself and for your school. And you're representing an entire university and a fan base and all of these people. So um, it's a whole other level of pressure. But, you know, gymnasts inherently love pressure. They, that's why they compete in gymnastics. You know, they don't get this far unless they thrive on that pressure and, and, and loving performances. Um, and so we kind of, we kind of dig into that and, and we talk about it constantly. Like, how do we come together as a team, have each other's backs, but Hey, you have to do your job and take care of your business and show up and hit your routine. So it's a challenge every year and it's not, we don't have it down to a perfect science and I'm sure no, no program does, but it's, it's different than other sports. Cause you can't just pass the ball. You know, you can't just pull one player out, put another one in. It's, you got to hit your routine for the team. What's recruiting like in gymnastics? Um, I, it's, I think it's changed a lot over the years. It used to be we recruited very, very young um, before they changed the rules. You know, a lot of seventh and eighth grade gymnasts were committing to schools. Uh, but now recruiting is a little bit later and we're talking to juniors and seniors in high schools mainly. Um, but Recruiting is interesting. I I love it because I feel like as a younger head coach, I can relate to, um, you know, athletes and gymnasts in a huge way. And I know what they're going through. I went through it more, a lot more recent than a lot of other coaches. Um, but you know, it's, it's been really, really fun to really showcase Arkansas and bring people on campus. I think a lot of, a lot of gymnasts have not just gymnasts, but I'm sure all athletes in general have their perception about what Arkansas is like if they've never been to Arkansas. And being able to bring them out on visits and show them like, here's Fayetteville, it's awesome. There's a lot to do here and we love it. And everybody is a Razorback fan. People are amazed by that when they show up on campus and um, and they wanna come here, which is awesome. So it's been really fun. It's been challenging, but um, interesting at the same time. And we love showcasing Arkansas. So help, again, some of us gymnastic dummies how often are girls on teams in your sport before they get to college? Like what, what are the opportunities? I mean, like yeah. club stuff, you know, yeah, maybe. Right. It's, it's pretty much entirely individual until they get to college. So that's really one of your only experiences to be on a team unless you like make the Olympics. Pretty much. Yeah. So like for me, I was, I competed as an individual all the way up until the moment we walked into the arena for team finals at the Olympics you know, we had trained for about a month before as a team, but before that, you know, I lived in Michigan and Allie Raisman lived in Boston and Michaela lived in California. We all trained separately with separate coaches. Yeah. And then we come together for this one month and compete as a team. Um, so there's not a whole lot of team environment in gymnastics and clubs compete as teams. At the end of the day, you know, it's yeah. it's really individual. Yeah. It, and And so the other part of that is, if you did well and your teammate doesn't do well and you're on a team, how do you be a good teammate when you really haven't been in that position? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that tough? It's tough. Yeah. And that's part of what I feel is teaching culture and teaching leadership that, that we do on our team is, you know, when, when I see an athlete struggling, it's, it's easy and it's natural for coaches to go up to her and say, Hey, let's check in what's going on. What do we need to do differently? How can we work through this? But I really try to encourage them to do that for each other and teach them, you know, what does that sound like? How is that 
how does that look different from this person's personality to this person's personality? Does this person need a little more of a kick in the butt or do they need a little more empathy? You know, it's gonna be okay. So I try to teach them those skills of get to know each other, understand each other's personalities and then pick each other up when you're down and figure out how to move this thing forward because obviously it's natural for us to do that as coaches. It's harder for the athletes to do that for each other, but that's what creates a stronger bond, you know, within the team. You have three Olympians on your staff. Mm-hmm. One of them is your fiance, <laughs> Chris Brooks. Congratulations, by Thank the you. way. Um, yourself. And then Kyla Ross, Mm -hmm. was that by design? Did you say, I'm only going to have an Olympian staff? (laughs) Um, I mean, yeah, it was by design. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Um, And I mean, not to mention our other assistant coach, who's not an Olympian, but she was a a national champion at UCLA, also a U.S. national team member. So just, you know, we're... We have a stacked resume, I think, as a coaching staff, and it's. I think that's what makes us unique compared to other coaching staffs and a lot of experience. But we've we've literally seen it all, good and bad. It's got to help in recruiting. By the way, do you ever pull out your gold medal <laughs> no. in recruiting? No, <laughs> that one shot in the Hogs Plus episode was yeah. like the first time I pulled out of the drawer in like years. So. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, early on, you, you probably looked at it a lot. No. After you had um, it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's interesting. Like the girls that we're recruiting, the athletes we're recruiting right now are were like kind of fangirls of mine when I was competing. Yeah. So that's that makes recruiting really fun. And I I get to show them, you know, how I am as a head coach now instead of just as an Olympic athlete. You, you know, you have this air about you that's very confident, but but you a lot of humility. Where where did that come from? Oh so somebody God. that's gotten so much attention and by the way, you, you know, you're out there performing and you better have confidence, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, but that's a really interesting balance and I'm fascinated by it. Yeah. Thank you. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, I have incredible parents. Um, I grew up in a really, um, level headed family. I think through everything I went through in gymnastics, like my parents kept me grounded. My siblings kept me grounded. Um, and I don't know, I just, I've been through a lot of things in my life already. And um, I don't know, I just, I've tried to just learn as much as I can. And my main goal when I wake up in the morning is to figure out how can I help, help my student athletes? How can I make this experience better and impact their lives for the better? How can I challenge them? And I don't know, I feel like when you do that every day, it's, it's really fun. And I'm just grateful I get to do it. Tell me about your hype coach. My hype, my hype man. <laughs> Uh, Corey, you mean? The hype man. Yeah. The team hype man. Yeah. Um, Corey, what's his last name? Tomlinson. Corey Tomlinson. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean to be shamelessly promoting, you know, the other show that we are a part of, Hogs Plus, but I just learned so much watching that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just great storytelling. I thought it was so cool. Yeah. But everybody loves that guy. Yeah. Yep. That was by design as well. <laughs> um, I knew everybody loves him. He's actually my best friend in the whole world. Um, and we met because uh, he was also a team manager in um, college. And so we met doing that and we just really connected and um, have remained really great friends. And I knew that if, if anyone can get a crowd excited and engaged, um, it's Corey. And so I, I was looking for that thing that was going to keep, it was going to make our home meets you know, really engaging, not just with, obviously the gymnastics is fun to watch, but you come to a gymnastics meet, there's these in in between moments where the, you know, they have the four minute touch warm up, And so I I, I knew there needed to be something to keep the fans engaged and excited and have them bring little kids down or throw t-shirts and just make it really fun for people, you know, while we're in between those moments of competition. So, and then not to mention what he does with our student section, um, is brilliant. You know, during, we actually, when we got here, moved the equipment around where it is in the arena. We moved the floor from the middle of the arena over to the side closest to the student section, very strategically, um, because I wanted Corey to stand right in front, get every student on their feet and get them dancing along and clapping along to all the floor routines, which is number one, really fun for our athletes. Mm. But two, it's just it gets students to want to come back. You know, they all want to go to football and basketball games. Now they all want to come to gymnastics meets too, um, which is amazing. And Corey does a great job for us and grateful he does. Here's another thing I find interesting about you is your whole life was built on you being able to do something. Now your life's built around you getting all kinds (laughs) of other people Mm -hmm. to do something, which is like a completely different role Mm -hmm. being a leader. How did you make that transition 
to not being able to do everything yourself. Like I'll just do it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting you ask that because, you know, as a coach, you, I get way, I get very nervous during meets. I get way more nervous. And as an athlete, I never got nervous. Not even one meet. I was nervous. I somehow like tricked myself into thinking that I was just excited instead of nervous. Um, but as a coach, like you don't have control, you know, I don't get to go up and do the routine. They do it. So, um, you know, it makes me a little more nervous, but I just lean on the fact that, you know, I've done everything I can to get them prepared. And, um, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm here to, to help them reach their goals. Um, and so it's, it's definitely an interesting transition and it's, it's hard not to have as much, feel like I have as much control over the performances. So you're in year three. Mm -hmm. How would you describe where you're on the journey in the journey here? Um, yeah. you know, your first season, you guys set an attendance ra record and ranked, you know, ninth in the country last year, you earned, you know, that spot in the SEC, uh, night session, you know, at the end of the season where the good teams are. Um, you, you've had the highest score in program history at a meet, um, you know, registered five scores of one point or one nine seven, uh, or better, you know, which like the Bud Walton night, 10,000. I mean, we've talked about how you've raised the profile. So how would you describe where you are on mm -hmm. the journey? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've made incredible strides these past two years in a lot of different ways. Um, the thing I'm most proud of is, is where we're at culturally as a program and as a team, um, you know, I walk into practice every day and, you know, the differences between this year and, and two years ago when we first got here, just in, you know, the faces of our athletes and the way they show up and the way they're excited to do what they're doing. I'm just, I'm really, really proud of that. Um, we are still, you know, obviously we're every year we try to recruit and we try to elevate the the talent, but you know, we this year it feels like we finally have a really, really strong team of talent. Um, and where we're at right now is is getting them to believe it. You know, the expectations are higher. They've they've broken all these records last year and continue to do that. And now they know the expectations are higher. So it's the challenge right now is getting the team to believe that they're good and that they can be good all the time. Um, and not just one time. So that's, that's kind of where we're at. And it's, it's a really exciting place to be in. And it's, it's a constant challenge every day, but, um, I'm really proud of the progress we've made. How would you describe the goal now? I mean, we got lots of goals. I mean, uh, the goal now is to get to that national championship yeah. and to get back to the national championship. The last time Arkansas was there, I think 2014, I'm trying to remember 2014, I think. So um, and it's harder now because it used to be 12 teams made it. Now only eight teams make it. Um, and as we continue to get better as a program, so does every other program. So um, that's the goal is to get back to that national championship and be one of those teams that's, that's fighting for the national title. How do you guys handle goals? Is it, you know, the big goal and then a lot of other little wins? And since yeah. you're so goal oriented, yeah. mm -hmm. what's the philosophy there? Well, I obviously have my goals for the program, but I feel passionate that the team's goals need to be their goals. Mm. And so in the preseason every year, I have them sit down and I, I sort of facilitate the conversation, but I get them to, to express, you know, what do you guys believe is possible for your team? Because if I prescribe the goals to them, it doesn't mean anything, but if it comes from them, they're gonna be so much more bought in. Um, and so this year, it was amazing. They were so much, they had so much more conviction in, in the way they, talked about their goals and expressed their goals. And that was really cool to see, but they've got goals of all kinds. I mean, they obviously want to make it to nationals. They want to be back at the night session at SECs, but then they said, you know, they want to do 200 hours of community service and they want to have a 3.55 team GPA. So they, they're thinking beyond gymnastics, which is really cool. And yeah. I always tell them when you show up, when you show up in one area of your life as a champion, it's gonna bleed into all the other areas of your life. And so I love that they're they're striving for greatness, not just in the gym and on the competition floor, but in in their schoolwork and um, and 200 hours of community service. I think they've already done like 170. So um, I couldn't be more proud of that. And they've got goals of all kinds and, um, and they're really excited about them. So three years ago, you'd never been a head coach. You said you were ready. You took on this challenge. You made a, a big life move too from Los Angeles to the Midwest, we'll call it, <laughs> Arkansas. And you seem like you're really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True? Yeah, definitely true. Yeah. We love it here. I mean, I'm originally from Michigan, so this is a little bit more 
similar to um, where I grew up. And um, the thing I like, I love most about Arkansas is the people here. I feel like everybody says that, but it's so true. I mean, I, I talk about the athletic department, you know, starting from Hunter, he's, he's the greatest athletic director that I've ever known. Um, the way he leads his, his athletic program is, is really admirable. It, it, all of us head coaches are so bought into what he's doing and how he supports us. Um, but then all the way down, just the people here are so nice. And it's been it's been really motivating. It makes me want to do a great job for the state of Arkansas, for University of Arkansas, and um, yeah, we're really enjoying it. So I, I like to ask any athlete or coach this um, when it's appropriate, and I think it is now. So whenever your time here's over, w- what do you hope people remember about when Jordan Weber was coaching the gym backs, when gold medalist Jordan Weber was coaching the gym backs? I've never been asked that question before. Um, I don't know a lot of things. I mean, I hope that it's it's obvious and there's there's proof that the program got better and that the student athletes were succeeding um, and the success is there on the competition floor, obviously. But I always say that, you know, ten years from now, I hope I look back and I I have these alumni that are out in the world just being amazing people and doing amazing things. In, in their whatever field they go into. I mean, that's that's the goal for me is if they go out, they, they take the things they learn from my program and in our program and um, and apply it to their lives and just continue to, to be, be champions in whatever they do. So I, I definitely hope that there's proof in that. 